Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vidali. Now, our topic today is input to output and everything in between working with Luminar. So I'm going to show you how we get our images into Luminar, how we work with them, edit them, make them look fantastic, and then how we export them out for either social media or for printing. All right. Now, before we begin, let's take a quick moment and thank our partner. Fujifilm. Make images, share stories, and experience moments at the speed of life with Fujifilm. Thank you for staying at home with us. All right, guys, and we're back. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Now, I'm going to show you these images here. We took I took these at a uh, Photoshop world many years ago, and this is Russell Brown um, playing the part of Lincoln. Now, what I did was this. From here, I clicked on the folder, or the plus icon next to the folder, and I searched my hard drive. And I like to put everything under underscore photography, and then I know it was a Photoshop world event, so I come down to Photoshop world, and it was 2012 DC, I select this, or choose that, and then select folder, and then all the images appear on my computer. Now, that's a really easy way to do it. Another option to import images into your machine is, imagine if you just get done doing a photo shoot, and all the images are on your SD card or your memory card. Well, from the folder selection, I could right mouse click on the top folder, and create a new subfolder under that. Let's call this John Costello. Because that's who I did the photos of. Now that I have another folder inside my main folder, if I right click on John, I can import to this folder. From here, I want to keep the images. I'm going to put them all into one folder. So it doesn't have the hierarchy that you'd find on your SD card. If there's any folders on your SD card, those will be the folders that will be transferred over to here. I just want all the images on that card to be put in one folder, and the folder is John Costello. I'm going to browse, and sure enough, here it is. I double-click, and then I'm going to select a folder. Once I do, the images are going to be coming in, or click Import. Now, the, Im the images are going to import into that particular folder. Now, I paused the tape just for a brief moment. It took about a minute and 30 seconds for the images to come in, but here are the engagement photos. Now they're in, all right? So that was another way for me to get images in, input into my computer. Another option is if I click this plus icon, and I just want to edit just one image at a time. And again, let's say, the, uh, a friend of yours gave you a, a thumb drive or an, S, uh, an SUB drive. I just click, put that in. And let's see, it's right here. I can come along. Let's choose any image. Uh, well, here, we'll use Michelle Grenier. And once I import that image in or bring it into Luminar, that's going to show up under single image edits. All right? So... So those are the different ways to get the images into Luminar. And of course, if you're using Photoshop or Lightroom, you could use that as a plugin, start in Photoshop, Lightroom, and then import that into Luminar to begin your edits. All right, so that's the import. Now, let's have a little fun. So I did come over and under, I'm sorry, under library, Um, I did create, I did have a, I did create my favorites here that we're going to edit. And I also went through and to create the favorites, I just selected the image, press the letter P, which will select it. Remember P for pick. So P to select the image. And then I used the letter X to, um, to reject the image. So here are the images that are inside Luminar. I'm going to click on the very first one. Using the shift key, I'll select the last one. Then 
I'll just send it over to the trash can. Now those rejected images are in my Luminar trash can and they're not gonna clutter up my system. All right, so back to the favorites. All right, let's use this image here. And we'll just do a real quick edit. Uh, tonality here um, is a free look that you could download from the marketplace. One of my favorite ones from, from Tonality, it's called Memories. So I'm gonna click on Memories. It does a conversion for me. However, I wanna tweak it further. Um, let's see, I don't like the texture overlay. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And it used the old structure command. Now I'm gonna get rid of that too. Here we go. Now, uh, let me turn on the highlighter so you can see better. Here we go. AI Enhancer. So we're going to bring out some of the hidden details. Ooh, that's good. Let's add a little structure to the scene. And I want to make it a little bit sharper. So that's where Detail Enhancer comes in. Black and white images screen for details. Good. That looks great. And, and we did this earlier on one of the other episodes to where I showed under the Creative Tools the LUTs. With LUTs here, we're adding color to the black and white image, and it's going to bring out the tonal range. Um, when I do this, I do like using Kodachrome. Look at that. Pop up the contrast. And we're good. One last thing I do want is come down to the Pro Tools, is I do want to adjust the shadows. There we go. And just balance them out. While I'm here, let's take control over the uh, highlights and then the midtones. There. Here's, this is what it looks like before, after. The whole thing before and after. Okay, great. So now we have it set. I'm going to right click and adjustments, copy the adjustments. Using keyboard shortcut G for grid, I want to display all the images. Control A or Command A to select all of them. Then just pick one, right click, adjustments, and paste the adjustments. Now the adjustments we just created for that one black and white is being applied to all the images and I can go through and tweak them or keep them as is to make the whole set look very consistent. All right, so now that we have this set, and let's choose this one here. Oh, I like that. All right, from the export tools, I can either export to one at a time to Smug Mug or to 500px, or I can export it if I want to send it to social media. Well. If I want to send it to print, I'll leave it at actual size. But look at the length on this. 42 or 4,256 pixels on the long end. If I want to send this off to Facebook or Instagram, I'm going to change the long end edge to 1920. Now, it's going to automatically take that from 4,200 down to 1920. <clears throat> excuse me, and whatever the length was or the width the width was, it'll adjust the width accordingly to where it matches, and I still keep my, my ratio. And then just click export, and I can export one or the entire series onto my hard drive, and now you can either print them or send them off to Facebook. All right? So, guys, there you have it. Those are ways we can import the images into Luminar, and then how to export them, and then in between, how to do a little bit of cleanup in your galleries to where you can pick your favorites, delete the ones you don't want, and then of course using the power of Luminar to create fantastic edits. All right? Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you like this episode or episodes like these, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you have suggestions for future shows, please leave those in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time on another Luminar Coffee Break.